Hello, this is Rupinder Sial and welcome again to Sparta Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about an amazing technique known as karyotyping which has revolutionized the fields of human genetics and disease research. So let's see what karyotyping is all about. Now it's really strange that for thousands of years we have been interested in heredity but it was strange that only in 1956 that is only 65 years ago that we actually got to know the actual chromosome number of human beings. We have to realize if we go back into history that the study of chromosomes was really hard. The chromosomes were observed only in 1880s by Walter, Walter Fleming and other uh, scientists like Waldair. So it was around 1880s. So just at the beginning of the 20th century that we had some idea, okay, there are these chromosomes. We still had no idea that genes actually are present on chromosomes. We just know, okay, these are some interesting bodies present in the cell. So chromosomes, very, very important for genetics, of course, as we now know. The actual chromosome number was very uncertain and that has to do with the development of technology because of the improvements in microscopy that we had. It was only in 1956 that TGO and Levin actually determined the diploid chromosome number to be 46. So now we have 46 chromosomes, 22 pairs of autosomes and then one pair of sex chromosomes. This is the actual metaphasic plate that they had prepared. So the important development that they had, it was kind of very serendipitous, it was very fortuitous that they used this hypotonic shock where they allowed the cells to basically swell so that they can expand and then burst and then spread their chromosomes. Otherwise, in the previous prepared samples, the chromosomes were squished one on top of each other and it was really hard to enumerate them and uh, count them properly. And after that, the field basically exploded. There were so many discoveries after the correct identification of human chromosome number and development of techniques for identifying them that we identified so many diseases that are caused due to these chromosomal abnormalities. So this is the technique of karyotyping. It is a pretty simple technique. We take about 5 ml venous blood. Another source of DNA is skin fibroblasts. They can also provide DNA. Remember that RBCs don't contain nucleus, so they, do, they cannot provide the DNA. We add phytohemagglutinin and culture medium. Phytohemagglutinin usually triggers the T cells to divide. We culture them at 37 degrees Celsius for three days. Then we add mitotic inhibitor like colchicine or colsimid and then we add hypotonic saline this basically provides the burst of the this hypotonic shock to the cells so that the cells because they don't have uh, cell walls to maintain the turbulent pressure so the cells burst and then we spread the cells onto the slide by dropping this is still kind of an art and the cytogenetics people are, you know, they gain years of experience doing that and it takes a lot of skill to do this properly, but it is doable. And then we analyze this metaphase spread. Usually metaphase or pro-metaphase, which is slightly before metaphase, is the stage that people want to look at. And then previously they had to do this by manually taking the picture and cutting it up and now we have softwares which can arrange these chromosomes into the respective groups. So the human chromosomes, they are organized into seven different groups and they are actually organized mostly by size. So chromosome number one is actually the largest chromosome and chromosome number 22 is probably the smallest chromosome with a little bit with exception. For example, X chromosomes is not the smallest. It's a pretty large chromosome. So this is the overall process of getting the spread. Okay? We also digest with trypsin and stain with genes are in some cases, but we have other 
staining techniques as we will see. So here is the G banding technique. So a lot of different banding techniques were developed in the after the uh, TGO and Levin's paper and this was one of the first ones. So here we have a dye called Jimza. So here this procedure is pretty much the same as I just described. We treat the chromosomes with pepsin which loosens them up by uh, protease treatment and then use the Jimza dye to stain regions of DNA which are termed as Jimza positive or G positive and some regions which do not stain those are named as genes are negative. Then there was the development of Q banding. This is based on the dye called quinacrine or quinacrine and it marks the same regions as the G banding. The specific thing about Q banding is that it binds to AT rich DNA. So these are the AT rich regions that it binds to and those are the ones where it gives the stain. Another technique is called the R banding. This is R stands here for reverse and it stains the bands which are just opposite to G banding. The, the procedure for R banding is a little bit peculiar because we heat denature the DNA with saline. So there is some buffering involved here and then we provide the regular Jimza stain and this leads to denaturation of AT rich DNA. So that cannot be bound by this dye. So it gives opposite banding pattern as compared to the G banding. So the R banding technique basically stains for GC rich DNA. Now similar technique can be used for staining GC rich DNA by using dyes like Chromomycin A3, Olivomycin and Mithromycin. So these stains specifically stain GC rich DNA. So that is what R banding is all about. Another banding technique is C banding and this is pretty obvious if you look at the chromosome spread here, they stain for centromere DNA. So these bind to the repetitive sequences present in human centromeres. So this is called C banding. So various banding techniques are available which can be used for gene mapping and location of different genes on chromosomes. So the field of human cytogenetics really developed and took off after the uh, identification of correct chromosome number in 1956 by TGO and Levin and when we have this correct reference for correct human chromosome number then we can look for deviations and see if developmental abnormalities or diseases are caused by these uh, chromosomal abnormalities. So aneuploidies, polyuploidies and monosomies they began to turn up during this phase as you can see uh, from this example 1959 where they looked at the sex chromosome anomaly in the Turner syndrome. So Turner syndrome is caused by a chromosome number of 45 where one of the X chromosomes is missing. Okay? And these women have webbed neck and they are having fertility issues. They are usually in, uh, infertile and sterile. So this was uh, molecule, the molecular mechanism of this disease was at least partially solved by going back to the sex chromosome anomaly in Turner syndrome. Similarly, Kleinefelter syndrome was also diagnosed and its mechanism was elucidated partially at least in 1959 where they showed the metaphase plate showing the 47 chromosome. I just like to remind that 47 X X Y is the karyotype of Kleinefelter syndrome. And one of the most common developmental abnormalities is the Down syndrome which is a trisomy and it is caused by presence of three copies of a chromosome called chromosome number 21. So this affects a lot of newborns in the United States as well as globally. So its uh, cause was known only after the analysis and development of human cytogenetics methods like the banding patterns that we have described. Uh, another syndrome that was uncovered was the Cryduchat syndrome in which the patients have very abnormal uh, craniofacial defects uh, and they are also having this 
peculiar cry like a cat their voice uh, modulation is like a like a cat and that's what the name of this syndrome derives from and these are some of the patients affected with this disease and this is caused by a small deletion in one of the copies of the chromosome number 5 and recently uh, after the, the development of these uh, g q r and c banding techniques fish which is fluorescent in situ hybridization which means the development of fluorescent probes where now we can have uh, specific dna fragments binding to different segments of the chromosomes these were developed and these were labeled with fluorescent tags so that we can basically generate very precise maps of different genes on different chromosomes this helped to eliminate biology further for example this is an example of philadelphia chromosome philadelphia chromosome is caused by translocation of a gene which is abl from chromosome number 9 all the way to chromosome number 22 creating this fusion of bcr abl and this leads to leukemia so here we have two examples of how fish can help us to determine chromosomal abnormalities on the right side is the philadelphia chromosome that i was just referring to so as we just discussed it is caused by translocation of a fragment from chromosome number 9 to 22 so here we can see a signal from chromosome number 9 in the red a chromosome number 22 signal is in green and here we see the fusion which is giving this nice yellow signal which signifies the presence of both the red and green fragments in one locus here we have another syndrome which is called the charcot marie tooth syndrome another developmental abnormality this is caused by duplication of a small fragment in chromosome number 17 and here you can see there is duplication of this fragment here this green fragment here is the probe but it is normal so we see two signals for this fragment normal but for the derived 17 number chromosome which has three copies now it gives three different patterns so this is an, a very good example of how we can look even closer at the makeup of these chromosomes and later on two remarkable technologies one is called spectral karyotyping these are pretty much related and another is called multiplex fish fish again refers to fluorescent in situ hybridization where we make probes for different parts of the chromosome so probes were generated for all the different human chromosomes and with the help of different dyes and the with the combinations of these dyes there is a very exquisite physics involved all in this uh, using interferometers we can generate different coloring patterns based on only a few dyes for all the different chromosomes so here you can see actually a nice metaphase spread of all the different chromosomes human chromosomes and on panel c this this one right here it shows the massive rearrangements that go on when a cell line transforms so for example this is a cancerous cell line so you can see lot of rearrangements lot of mixing and matching of colors which shows that the different fragments of chromosomes have moved so this was my discussion of karyotyping technique it's a very important technique for cytogenetics and it has revolutionized the field in diagnosis of human genetics diseases uh, i hope you liked this discussion uh, if you have any doubts or comments or questions about this please let me know in the comment section below as usual please give the video a thumbs up if you like the video and do subscribe to my channel till the next time we meet take care and bye bye